You and I both know that something has been wrong with this Boston Marathon story for since the beginning. Um, the back and forth with the um, Saudi national at the very beginning, and then the disappearance of that entirely, and then yesterday on CNN, and we'll play this in a few minutes. It is absolutely, um, it's stark raving madness what's going on. Uh, with CNN saying uh, we have a a dark skinned individual that has been taken into custody, and then all of a sudden he wasn't in custody, and then he was going. Then there were two others, and then they were going to take them to the uh, the courthouse, and then nothing happened. And then last night the president meets with the uh, with a Saudi official, um, and that was unscheduled. And he was just at the White House, and then we read that he didn't really meet with the president. He was meeting at somebody. He was meeting with somebody at the White House, and the president just popped in. Let me tell you something. I know how the White House works. I know how foreign affairs work, and that is exactly how you schedule a meeting with the president of the United States when he's not, when he should not be meeting with somebody. Because if you bring him into the Oval Office, then what was he doing in the Oval Office? But if he was in the White House and the president just happens to be walking down the hallway and he's like, "Hey, Mahmoud, how are you? What's happening? Oh, you're here for? Let me sit in for just a second. That's a lie." That was a meeting with the president. They say it was over Syria. That is another lie. And it will be exposed. We have breaking news exclusive from the blaze now. We have been working with um, some of the best journalists that are uh, alive today. At least those journalists that still feel life inside of them and are willing to tell the truth. Sarah Carter is one of those journalists. She's an investigative reporter in Washington, D.C., and we so appreciate all the hard work that she is doing. She hopefully will be on this program later today. But let me give you the story that we now have and we are breaking at the blaze. The Saudi student that was taken into custody, according to the FBI, for questioning, the one that was in the hospital, that was first taken into custody, then he was a, uh, a suspect, and then he was a person of interest, and then he's just like an old buddy. He is not a person of interest. He, is, um, he has been a suspect from the very beginning. One source at the FBI and another at the Saudi embassy referred to the student as connected to an important Saudi family. This we are going to let Sarah Carter open up and and tell us all about. When you hear the stories on all of this, everything will fall into place. When this guy was taken into custody, when he was a suspect, all the bells and whistles went off because... Oh, he is somebody. An event was created on this guy three days ago. Now, what an event means, it's a file. The event file contains a deportation record. Now, some some uh, sites, I believe Drudge has the deep, that, that this guy is going to be deported. Well, here's the whole story. This event file three days ago contains his deportation record. And the reason he's being deported. According to ICE, the reason is under Section 2123B, Security and Related Grounds, Terrorist Activities. His visa has now been revoked. The FBI said the file was started, quote, just in case he was found connected to the crime. However, the file shows that he was scheduled to be deported. This was not a precaution it was in quote orders one agent said he believes told the blaze a voluntary departure has been signed that means the Saudi student could be out of the country as early today this guy is I believe and we will talk to um, the blaze will have all of the stories and we will talk to Sarah uh, Sarah Carter on this in in just a little while 
But I believe this is possibly the ringleader. This guy is absolutely involved, and we are flying this dirt bag out of the country because he has connections. And we are covering up. The file has immediately been classified. We had this information before it was classified. Now it has been classified. We believe the deportation order is going to be classified as well, requiring a Freedom of Information Act to get at it. The story that you will see or would have seen if the Blaze hadn't broken this news is that he wants to go home. He's hurt, he's injured, and everyone knows you can get the best of medical attention in Saudi Arabia, not in America. He's hurt and he wants to go home. The truth is, he's going to be deported so he can go home. And Sarah will fill in who mommy and daddy are. One source says the FBI believes the Saudi student is tied to two or three other people. Our source says it looks like they're trying to make this a lone wolf crime, so the Saudi government will be spared embarrassment and the U.S. will be spared explaining how a terror cell was active when we have al-Qaeda on the run. And the press will continue to lie. Here's what I want you to do. This is breaking news, exclusive story from The Blaze. It will be posted. If it is not posted now, it will be posted in the next few minutes. I want you to take this. We will tweet it out as The Blaze. We will tweet it and put it on our Facebook at The Blaze. I will put it on my Facebook, my Twitter account, and it it will currently be up on The Blaze, or it will be very, very shortly. I want you to take this story and spread it as fast as you can and put it everywhere because this is true. And the other media sources, if they don't know it yet, they will be able to verify this quickly. And then you will see. Let the chips fall where they may. I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt that they'll all report this. But I, I wonder how many actually will. I wonder how many are actually in bed. So you know, there is more information where where this leaves off. Much more information. We are going to do our patriotic duty and just assume that this administration is doing the right thing so they can clear up the entire madness. We're going to do our patriotic duty But I'll tell you, yesterday afternoon just about made me lose my mind. Watching CNN, knowing what we know, knowing uh, knowing what we believe, seeing the press all uh, all, uh, go into damn near hysterics that they couldn't find a white guy who perpetrated this bombing. Can I tell you something? I don't want an Arab, an Arab American being responsible for this. I am thrilled that this is a foreign national. And you know why? I am thrilled not because I hate foreign nationals or I'm xenophobic, because I don't want to believe that about an American of any race or any religion. I don't want to believe that about my fellow Americans. Somebody growing up in some other country and then coming here and they're all screwed up? Sure, I can accept that. I don't want my fellow Americans to be psychos. But the rest of the media is willing. They are cheerleading for it. What have we become? You and the media should be shamed of yourself. What have you become? And here I go with my first apology. (sighs) We cannot become angry because... (laughs) Go ahead. Do the Yoda thing, Pat. Do it. (laughs) You don't remember it, do you? Um, (laughs) Let's see. I don't remember Yoda saying... Thinking I am. (laughs) Mm. There's fear. There leads to 
Anger. Anger. Anger leads to hatred. Hatred leads to suffering <laughs> or something to that effect. Hmm? Yes. yes. In exacto. I mean, you know what I need? Elder, that is. You know what yeah. I need? I need something like this for his desk. This is a quote that Reagan had sitting on his desk. <laughs> That is on my desk. There is no limit to what a man can do or where he can go if he doesn't mind who gets the credit. That's what sits on my desk. I need that. I need somebody to make a really nice sign mm-hmm. with the Yoda thing. With the Yoda right in front of me. <laughs> Sit right in yeah, front so of him. That so would be helpful. It comes you, up all the time. That's the thing that you can never remember. <laughs> Everything else you can remember. <laughs> no, that's I that know. one. I don't know why I can't get that. <laughs> yeah. It's we, this, though. <laughs> Uh, it it is uh, in the words of you know the great master. Fear leads to anger. Fear. Anger leads to hate. Hate. That was to suffering. suffering. You I got actually it. did you get it. it. Yeah. yeah. All right. So here's the here's the thing. I um, the news is becoming um, the news is becoming more and more important for a historic take. But that's it. Um, it is not necessarily important because these guys are so powerful now and so out of control. Um, and, and, and the media is so in the bag for them. When you have the media, think of this. Think of this. Would you ever, ever wish any American to be the one to do this. Any American. Do you wish that? I I don't appreciate the President of the United States, but I do not want to believe that the President of the United States is, is, do, is doing what we are now going to show you he is. I don't want that. Because once we do the damage to this office, once we do this kind of damage, you're not getting it back. We are a country that is different. You ask anyone from any part in the world, the reason we are different is because we trust each other. We are good to each other. We believe the best in people. And the media is rooting for that to be dead. Once that is dead, there's no going back. We must not lose the trust for each other. We must not lo- miss the love for each other. That doesn't mean that we don't, that we're not extraordinarily firm on the facts. And I am trying really hard not to get angry, but there is such righteous indignation. When I saw John King yesterday on CNN, and I presented it as laughter yesterday because the staff was laughing because it was so, it was a clown show. When John King get on, again, got on, uh, on CNN and said, I just, I don't want to use any language that the police might have used. And first, they start to verify this information, and then they bury it. They bury it. I don't know if they know the information that we're breaking today. I have no idea. But it is out there now, and let's see if they report it. Maybe they had all this information, but they are too much of a coward to report it. So, they get on, and they flush their credibility down the toilet. Because John King comes in and says, I've got breaking news. And I, we just, were, we just were, had confirmed uh, by a Boston police authority that they have just uh, taken in a suspect. And he's going to be brought to court, and uh, we j- I, don't, I don't want to use some of the language that they use to describe this individual. I'm just going to say he's a dark-skinned man. A dark-skinned man? Listen to, what he, listen to how he phrases this. I, I'm told I want to be very careful about this because people get very sensitive when you say these things. I was told by one of these sources who was a law enforcement official uh, that this was a dark-skinned male. Uh, the official used some other words. I'm not going to repeat them until we get more information. He's not going to use... He's, some- stop. He's not going to use other words. What are those other words? The other words, foreign national, Saudi, Arab... And who is offended by this? John, CNN, look at yourself in the mirror. Who is offended by this? Saudis? Foreign nationals that are bad? Al-Qaeda? Muslim terrorists? Who is possibly in America? They don't care. 
I don't care what the religion is. I don't care what the uh, what the look of the guy is. I want to know the truth. And boy, I tell you, they get very offended. Well, you know what? The truth is really offensive sometimes. Really offensive. You want to know the truth that's offensive? Hey, Glenn, it looks like you've put on about 20 pounds, you fatty. Yep. Well, thank you for telling me that. Yep, that's true. You're welcome. The truth is offensive sometimes. But when the truth is said because it is true and it is important to know, it's important to know that we have a foreign national with wild connections. The president was meeting with some of those connections last night. This has been a lie from the very beginning. It's important to say those things, even if they are offensive. We should clarify, too, that what you're saying, obviously, is what we're getting from our sources. This doesn't mean that this guy is the guy who did it. it we don't know at what no, level he's know, involved in. We don't know all we know those he's details part of the, we, we just know that there's, they're interested, obviously. No, we know he's being deported yep, for terrorism that. And security-related grounds. We know that. We know he is involved in this incident at some level. We don't know if he's the ringleader, the guy who did it. We, I believe we know that he was there because he had powder burns. He was in the hospital. So we know he was part of it. What part? We don't know. Um, and the blaze will continue to break the ground, and the media will either follow or they will fall apart. You decide media and by the way please call your cable operator tell them enough is enough get the blaze now 966 the blaze 1-800-996 -9 blaze or get the enough is enough they won't tell the truth we will